Now that the giant hole is unplugged, all that is left to be done is to throw the nuclear reactor bomb inside. That was a hint for one of you two to go get the nuclear reactor bomb so we can throw it inside of the hole. Oh, well why didn't you just say that then? What are you talking about? I did just say that then. I just said it. I think he means why weren't you more clear that that's what you wanted us to do? I was being clear. I was as clear as all the crystals in the world. Um, sir, I have a question. What's that, henchman number Vaughn? How come everything has to do with everything in the world? What did you say? Well, like, everything you say has to do with the biggest in the world, the greatest in the world. Why do you have to say world all the time? Because, henchman number Vaughn, I'm trying to conquer the world, and if you want to conquer the world, you have to talk about the world all the time. I wasn't aware of that. That's why you're not aware of that, because you're not trying to conquer the world. No, actually, we're trying to blow it up. Conquer it, blow it up, it's all the same thing. The Vebbles conquered the Death Star and they blew it up. I would actually argue they destroyed the Death Star. You would argue that. You're one of those Stormtrooper robots, aren't you? Um, sir, I think the Stormtroopers were people in suits. Oh yeah, they were totally people in suits because everybody has a thousand billion henchmen like that. Listen, if I can't get that many henchmen, there's no way that old man and James Earl Jones could get that many. Do you mean Darth Vader? No, I mean why don't you just go get some nuclear reactor bomb so we can blow up the world and get this over with. Do you want us to both go? Yeah, it's very heavy. I think we might need to get both of you to lift it. Actually, sir, I'm a robot. I can lift that weight very easily. Listen here, henchman of a robot. I'm trying to inspire teamwork. You're not inspiring any teamwork. Sorry, sir. I wasn't aware of your plan. That's why you want, because it was so secret even I didn't know I was doing it. Now go get the bomb. Yes, sir. Hey, listen, when we go get the bomb, I want to be in the rear. You would. Alright, Dr. Roboclaw, here's the plan. Me and my associate here are going to go inside the base and capture Evil Professor. Then, when the coast is clear, we'll tell you when to come in. Why can't I just go in with you? Because we already have this entire plan about being sneaky like ninjas. And as far as I know, you've not had any ninja training. Without the ninja training, you'll completely destroy our entire plan. But sir, we haven't had any ninja training either. Speak for yourself, Trapdoor Danish Tilsit. I've had tons of it. What the hell is a Danish Tilsit? Tilsit is a surface ripened cheese originally made in the mid-19th century by Dutch settlers in East Prussia near the town of Tilsit. Trying to recreate their beloved Gouda, the cheese became infected with molds, yeast, and bacteria while being aged in a damp cellar. Thus, Tilsit also known as Tilsa Tavarti, was born. Although similar, this Danish cheese has a fuller and more intense flavor than the regular Havarti. Wow, you really thought that one through, didn't you? Indeed I did. I never do anything half-ashed. Except for sit on the toilet. After all, you'll never know when you'll need half of your ash to do something very, very important. Right. So, why can't I go again? Listen, it's very, very complicated, but rest assured, you will get your revenge on Evile. I promise you. Just wait out here and stand guard. Make sure no one follows us in. Who would follow you in? I'm not sure. That's exactly why we need someone keeping guard. Honestly, Robo Dude, you might as well go ahead and agree, because this is just going to go on until he gets his way. That seems awfully childish, but considering the circumstances, I guess I might as well agree. A wise choice indeed, Terminator 2. You do realize Terminator 2 is the name of the movie, right? The actual machines are just Terminators. God damn it, Spider! Stop questioning my movie knowledge! Hey, you actually got my name right this time! Yes, well I figured by the time I had to start explaining it to you, it just wasn't funny anymore. Wait, so you knew my name all along? You were just doing this to screw with me? Indeed I was, Cheese Whiz. Now let's go attack this base. I can't tell if you're being dumb or just a jackass. Let's just say it's that second one. Is this what you guys do all day? No wonder you never get anything done. Stop arguing about movies and just attack the base. Seriously, how hard is this? The T-1000 has a point. Let's go. Val, I never noticed how lonely it was when there was nobody around. Perhaps I shouldn't have sent both of them to go get that bomb after all. If only Henshin number two were here, then I could yell at him about being stupid or something and feel better about myself. Sir! Holy shit, I'm so totally psychic! Hello there, Henshin number two! Hello there yourself, Evile Professor. Don't look right now, henchman number two, but I think that Mandelbaum is following you. Actually, he's the one that led us here. What? Is that true, henchman number two? Yeah, it's true. Why would you do that? You know I don't like him, because he always tries to stop my plans of destroying the world. Why would you bring him here? That is the exact opposite of what a henchman is supposed to do. I brought him here because I'm totally sick of the way you treat me. It's always, oh, henchman number two, you're stupid. Henchman number two, you're ugly. Henchman number two, stop eating my jelly sandwiches. They were my jelly sandwiches! They were mine! I brought them from home! They had my name on the baggie! They weren't yours! 
No, they were mine. Because when you signed up to be my henchman, I had you sign a contract, and in that contract it stated that any kind of food you bring into mine base is my food. Okay, first off, you didn't make me sign a contract. And secondly, even if I did, why the hell would you put that in there? Because, henchman number two, all of my money goes to things to blow up the world. If I spent all the money on food, when would we ever be able to blow up the world? So what, you just relied on all your henchmen to bring you food? No. I don't know. Maybe. Listen, as touching as this reunion is, I'm afraid I'm going to have to take you in. Why would you think you can do that? I have done nothing wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're planning to blow up the world. What would have ever given you that idea? Well, first there's the giant hole to the center of the earth. That could be for anything. Maybe I plan to drop a rock in it to see how far the hole is. Then there was the nuclear reactor bomb that you stole. I stole no such thing. That was a lamp. Everybody was confused. And finally, there's that sign over there that says Dr. Evile's World Destruction Site. I told you that was a bad idea, sir. You know what, henchman number two? You're not the ones that makes the decisions. So what if I want a little bit of credit for blowing up the world? Is that too much to ask? Credit from who? If your plan worked, the only people that'll be seeing that sign is me and the other henchmen. Yeah, well maybe I wanted you guys to know. Wait, so you didn't think your henchmen knew you were blowing up the world even though you talked about it five times a day? Yeah, well, maybe one of you guys was hearing impaired and I was trying to be handy capable. Why the hell would you think any of us was hearing impaired? How would I know? Maybe the ones that was hearing impaired was also a mute. And that way, he couldn't tell me that he was hearing impaired. So I decided it was safest just to go ahead and put up the sign. Which one of us would be mute? That doesn't make any sense. None of us are mute. You've heard us all talk before. Not to butt into anybody else's business, but I think Greg has a point. Who the hell is Greg? You know, Greg. Hinch from number two? Vet, you have a name? Of course I have a name. Why the hell wouldn't I have a name? But you're a henchman. Henchmen don't have names. Look at all those guys from Star Trek that run around the red shirts. They're so like, hell, hey, Mr. Red Shirt, come down me as a planet. We need to go expose the giant alien's mouse. And since they get down there, they're like, hey, henchman, go in there and go check out the alien's mouse. And they're like, I don't want to. And they're like, you're a henchman, go do it anyway. And since they all die. First off, I'm fairly certain they were crew members, not henchmen. And secondly, I still think they had names. Well, if you think that I'm going to start calling you that, then you're totally wrong. Especially after all this betraying that you're doing. Not to mention the fact that I still just prefer henchmen. That's exactly what I said. Anything else just feels wrong. Totally. Well, Evile, as is customary in this hero capturing the villain scenario, I'm going to ask you to tell me all the intricate details of your plan and exactly how it worked. Wait, you mean you can't figure it out from what you already know? Listen here, henchmen. I am not a scientist, and as such, I know nothing about sciencing. Because of this, I need him to explain it to me. Don't judge me. I never judge you, Mandelbaum. I know, Skippy. That's why I love you. You what, Mandelbaum? I mean, that's why you're a great sidekick. Anyway, Evile, if you wouldn't mind... Huh, Voth? I was distracted by that army of evil villains coming to conquer you right now. I think maybe you need to turn around for, like, I don't know, five or six minutes and then turn back around and then we can totally continue this conversation because I will still be here. My god, an army of evil villains? I really need to turn around then. Mandelbaum, I think he might be trying to trick you so that you turn around and he can escape. Good thinking, Skippy. Hey, Vile, are you trying to trick me? No, why would I want to trick you now? I've already been captured. I just want to help you. So turn around and fight the evil army. And if you don't seize them, just keep looking really hard. They're kind of invisible and tough to see. It makes a compelling argument, Skippy. If there really is an army of invisible bad guys after us, we need to turn around and stop them. You're kidding me, right? This is the same guy that's been stopping all of our evil plans for the last three years? He's a fucking idiot! Hey, I resent that. No, I mean seriously. He's telling you that an invisible army is coming to kill you and that you need to turn around for six minutes to stare at it and try and find it. And that during that time, he's not going to try and run away. And you're actually considering turning around. What the hell is wrong with you? What's wrong with me is that I'm a hero. And it's a hero's duty to stop villains at all costs. Particularly giant armies of invisible ones. Those are the worst kind, Mandelbaum. Damn straight, Skippy. They're the kind that can loot and pillage cities, and take our women. And I want no one taking our women. You know, in all these years I thought I have the dumbest boss in the world. I'm actually regretting changing sides. I would say I told you so, but I'm going to be the bigger man and not say it. Well, considering you never did actually tell me so, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, I was thinking that too.